Are we live? Is it Friday? Are we having technical difficulties? <laughs> what would it be if everything just ran smooth every time? Then there, there would be no challenge. There would be no victory <laughs> at the end of challenge. How is everybody doing tonight? or tomorrow or whatever time zone that you find yourself in. I am so happy to be here with all you. I meant it in the title. <laughs> We've got gems and we have fossils and rocks and things like that, but the best are friends. <laughs> so let's see who's in the house. Jenny's here and Brian's here and Jackie's here and Bob is here and Diane, how you doing? Lisa is of course here. We got Jackie. Did I already say Jackie? I think so. Cynthia is in the house, probably has her microscope all dialed up and ready to go too. We got Rufo. Chris is here. Did I say John already? Uh, and he says, yes is the answer. And I love that answer. <laughs> I'm not even sure what we're talking about. And I love the answer. Yes, for sure. <laughs> we are live, says Bob. <laughs> Perfect. I, I sure hope so. <laughs> and my mom is in the house. Everybody say hi to Judy. Wave a warm hello over there in California land. I hope that you guys are doing well weather-wise and getting some sunshine you can see there's actually sun <laughs> coming through my window and actually it just broke through today oh theo is here and he just popped up a beautiful blue banner of of uh <laughs> givingness <laughs> thank you so much theo i really appreciate it uh we were just talking not too long ago thank you and he says first <laughs> We were uh, having a, a little celebration about upgrading. So we we got the uh, the bigger, better, faster, stronger, more everything streamyard. So hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we're we're ready to play hardball now. We can talk for as long as we want and we can tangent until the early early morn, until the cows come home. If they can find their way, we're gonna still be tangenting. So uh, thank you so much, Theo, for, for uh, tossing in for the, uh, the StreamYard platform of Everlasting Goodness Fund. <laughs> Journeys is in the house. Good to see you. Cheryl is here. Allison is also here. Uh, she had a great live earlier this week and was showing off some wicked awesome meteorites, but also uh, some stuff that was apparently coming to me. So that was really, really fun to hop in on. There have been some fantastic lives to uh, to go and hang out on uh, this, this week. So uh, Journeys was hanging out at the rock show. We got to, to see some, some killer rocks because of that. Thank you so much, Josh for sharing your livey goodness. And of course, Kyle is extra double live all the time. He's he's like one of the liveliest guys I know. Uh, and and so there I unfortunately missed his his uh, rainbow, rather excuse me, fire obsidian live, uh, which which was was awful. But some of us have been working very, very hard on an upcoming thing that I'm going to uh, mention the schedule of here in just a moment. Um, I, I'm gonna make sure that I said hi to Jeff and Eric the cat and all y'all that are hanging out there. Oh, Tiger Eye is in the house. Did I already say that? That, that Opal guy is here as well. And uh, Boot is here ripple rocks hey 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 he's saying what's up peeps steve is here good to see you steve um another bob we've got bobs bobs a plenty bobs in plural it's awesome uh tomcat josh is also here wait a second uh is that the same as journeys because I, I think that he was also supposed to be some kind of a tomcat as well um or wildcat or something 
I don't know, something happened at the uh, the gem show where where he was uh, given an impromptu uh, nickname. <laughs> Journeys. Perhaps that is him. Jayek is here or Yahik, whichever way that goes. Maybe uh, toss the phonetics in there for a girl. And so tonight we have, of course, a bunch of hanging out to do. Boy, we better just hurry up and get to it. We've got some micro zone to plunge into, of course. We have some talking, we're talking about prepping, prepping fossils, people. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Paraloid B72. And I don't know, you can almost see that that's like a, a viscous mixture. Viscous mixture of doom. Actually, preservation of fossils. They already met their, their doom. But we're going to uh, check out some, the fossils are right behind me. It's always weird when I'm looking in the camera and trying to point at things. They're back there. And so uh, we're going to check some of the stuff out that I've been finding on the beach the last few errands. You guys got to see a quick slideshow of that while I was pitter-patting around with uh, impossible feats of technology. Boy, that stuff will get your knickers in a twist if you let it. It always happens right when you're trying to, like, say, start a live or something. <laughs> so um, I, I'm, I'm noticing in the screen that, like, I've got a lovely blush. Uh, we've been having some sunshine mixed with with showers, but it's starting to to try to be spring here, guys. And so happy spring to you all. Let's let's uh, let's have one of these Steinkern, everybody. <laughs> what's what's in your moose? <laughs> If you want to get a moose of your own, go to Thane, Wyoming, and, and go hit Tony up. The Steinkerns around to everyone. All right. Um, <laughs> Tomcat Josh. Yep. Winter came back for boot. I'm sorry about that, boot. What's up with that? I know. The same thing happened here. We were like, it was it was like the Pineapple Express, you know, the, the sunshiny kind. Um, and we got this wonderful, wonderful sunshine and then it went away and it started raining. And then of course it comes back and then it goes away. Did I say hi to spot? And Sean, Sean is in the house. Stein Kern says Lisa, she's always down with that. Um, everyone in my chat is same white text as the posts. Hmm. Peeps still got their wrenches though. Huh? That's weird. Okay. Technical difficulty land. I thought it, I thought everything got cleared up. We've been actually having these uh, strange, um, we've been having strange outages at, in my region. And so when sometimes when I think that it's my situation glitching, it's actually the whole entire internet being broken. So hopefully, hopefully you guys are all <laughs> doing okay and not getting too glitched out. Uh, somebody, oh, let's, I, I, somebody's peach trees. Oh, Bob, our peach trees are in full bloom here. Oh, that sounds so nice. And you've got new little goat babies. Ah, so cute. Uh, if you don't belong to our discord already and you want to see goat babies, then you need to join the Rockhound podcast discord. And uh, you can see what what spring brings to to some folks. So excited about that! Um, yes, Stein Karens. <laughs> I totally need more of what's in this mug right now. Um, and I got uh, so I was gonna to go run down what we're gonna do to tonight. Um, I've I've actually Jackie was talking to me earlier about this project possibility of carving a flower. And I was like, yeah, I've carved a flower before in, in rock. Uh, it was carnelian. And she's like, oh, well, how about um, doing, doing iris agate? And, and I was uh, at first thinking sunstone, like what wouldn't facet well would, would make a nice carving. And so I was going into my uh, archives and trying to find the flowers so that I could show Jackie. 
and I couldn't find it, but I, I did pull out some slides to, to, to show you guys as far as that's concerned. Jackie says that she got snow last night. It's supposed to get uh, four to 24 inches. Wow. Throughout the state Sunday and Monday. And I'm supposed to be going back or going to Iraq show where all the snow is coming. Oh man, I'm sorry. And I know that you, you've had some cabin fever and you need to get out to the rocks. So I do hope that you're able to make it. And then at the same time, of course, be safe because, um, boy, uh, like I said, the last time that Steve went out in the, the snow, he unfortunately got bumped. Uh, and boy, it's not cheap to get to get bumped. We don't have to worry about it because it's the insurance and it wasn't his fault. But I mean, uh, we just got like clipped in the truck bed and it's going to cost so much money for somebody. It's bad. And of course, you want to stay safe bodily as well. Silverback is in the house. Good to see you, man. Uh, from, from tomorrow, man of tomorrow. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see, just catching up with all your, your wonderful comments, everybody. Uh, and I did hear that, uh, Alleluia was, was doing some live in over yonder as well. I was saying that there were some, some really cool lives going on. I, I just happened to catch on a break from my mission that I need to uh, have done by Wednesday, that uh, uh, AL Prospecting, Al Prospecting was doing a, a live and he was, he was chewing away on this huge opal. And I think it was Sonia who I don't think she's, she's landed in the house yet, but Sonia uh, let the discord know, which is a great idea. Like if you're, if you're starting a live, uh, you know, put some invite in the, the discord because I was like taking a break and I was just kind of like scanning the socials. And I saw that and went on and it was super cool to sit on in on that, uh, uh, that rock taming that he was trying to do it was huge. I mean, it looked like in his hands, it was just this, this big blue and green, some little bit of opal or rather purple. I just want to say opal a bunch. <laughs> it was an opal, 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 opal. <laughs> so opally. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh the mission <laughs> right right theo <laughs> that's about how i was feeling in 2 a.m in the morning last night when i was working on it the mission well i'll i'll get um right on with that announcement then um and life with unclossing spondylitis. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I don't say that word very much in life. And so I'm sure I just butchered that. I'm going to call you life for now. <laughs> life up here on this live. Good to see you. Thank you for, for joining us. Hey there. Hello from Canada. Hey, Canada. Uh, love watching your videos. You can call me. Ah, Anki. Thank you. <laughs> it's even better than life. <laughs> Anki. Good to see you. Thank you so much for, for coming and hanging out with us here. And Mr. Turtle Montana has always uh, also made it in into the chat. Uh, welcome in. Good to see you. And um, so let's let's get this thing up. Um, this is the schedule. This is this is the schedule as follows, says Theo. So we are getting ready for the Makers Challenge, y'all. These are dates that are important for you and all of your loved ones. If you didn't know where to be, Sunday, which today is Friday, you guys, and then there's tomorrow, and then there's Sunday. So this, this thing is rolling off hot. We've got <laughs> Rock Hounding Adventures. Hey, I know that guy. Kurt is going first and Katie did rocks as well. So Kate and Kurt on Sunday. Now, what I want you guys to do right now in the chat, um, unless, you know, you're in the middle of another heated discussion, but 
I, you can either do right answers or wrong answers. What are they going to do for their makers challenge? I would love for you guys to weigh in on what you think might be coming out of these guys for the makers challenge. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll have it here proof that, that you're psychic, uh, if, if you are correct. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so, um, making, making your bed does count spot. I, I think all of the making of making this is honorable. <laughs> um, and no, it's not my maker's project. Uh, that's done, says Theo, right? Um, boy, you're done. Oh my gosh. I would love to be done right now. <laughs> so uh, Allison is calling Pooping Gnome. Um, I don't know. That's somebody else's jam. Uh, although the, I'll get to that day if you want to reassert Pooping Gnome for Wednesday. Um, <laughs> Jeff isn't allowed to guess on mine. He knows. Oh, you let the cat out of the bag, Rufo? Ah, hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so on Monday, March 25th, we've got Rufotris Rooted Rockhound. Who is in the house, Chris? Uh, so watch those, those, uh, answers to the question, what in the world? Oh my gosh, Jeff, that is such a good guess. Jeff, thinks that this would be a good maker's challenge. I endorse that one. Steinkern. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it. Let's see. We've got faceted dinosaur pig skunk. <laughs> Man bear pig. Um, like a normal dinosaur skunk, but more piggy. Well, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, perhaps the dinosaur skunk did evolve into something more piggy-like, uh, hooven-footed, <laughs> the, the old hooven-footed skunk, um, space aliens. That's a, that's a great guess. <laughs> Man bear pig carving. Dude, are we on the wavelength or what? That's fantastic. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> so Rufo says that he had to bounce ideas off someone. So Jeff, yeah, usually there's a confidant. I totally get it. <laughs> so um, I, I don't know. What do you guys think that Ma'am Lambo's going to make? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. We've got John weighing in. Karen, going to go out on a limb and say that I bet it's something to do with a stone or two. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's been talking to you too. <laughs> he's, he's letting out like important information, <laughs> leaking it to the press. Um, <laughs> and you're right, though, John. Uh, Cheryl thinks uh, they will be competing for the best bird-proof squirrel feeder championship. Uh, yeah, is squirrel in the house? We could uh, we could have squirrel weigh in on that one and see who's who's the winner. And Allison, thank you so much for sharing Rufo's uh, link. So uh, definitely hit that that channel for the the Monday. Uh, so, so far we've got Sunday, Rock County Adventures, Katie Did Rocks, and then Monday, Rufo Tris and Mam Lambo. Can't wait to see what he does. And then Tuesday, we've got um, currently Rock County. So Jared's going to be making something this year. And that is going to be totally exciting. And then we've got Quest for Details. I loved his, his rope making last year. I've been wanting to, to make rope ever since then. So... <laughs> oh, that's right, Theo. Second channel project. Uh huh. Somebody else was invited. <laughs> and uh, oh, Tomcat Josh. I like that idea. Agate slice tiles for a backsplash. I mean, that should just happen. <laughs> and I think that Lisa, this one maybe belongs to Ma'am Lambos. <laughs> Do you think? Do you think that he might do a fossil? Well, we'll have to see. Uh, we're all going to be tuning in. And so uh, Tuesday, Jared and Quest for Details. That's going to be exciting. And Theo says, 
I made mine completely from scratch. Biggest hint I'm giving. <laughs> you scratched it? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get much when I scratch. But um, I mean, you know, hives, mosquito bumps, things like that. <laughs> Looks like Brian might have had a good guess. Uh-huh. Yes, and Lisa thinks that Josh's is a, a very good idea as well, Mr. Tomcat. <laughs> and uh, let's see, Bob says, it looks like we're in store from some, some carved stones. That sounds exciting. Definitely. <laughs> John says he would definitely invest in an anti-squirrel invention. So perhaps that is something that somebody needs to be working on for their uh, project. And I did say to our discord, the rock on podcast discord, that if y'all have made something, you can go ahead and submit it to our podcast show and tell there's a special channel in the, the discord, uh, go ahead and pop those up so that we can, we can do the, uh, the discordian and, uh, viewer show and tell of all their, makerness because actually a uh, rock and roll rock hounding Rick over there, he made uh, this Flintstone car that was so cool one year. And we got to show that off on a viewer show and tell. And there's been some other just insane things that people have uh, shared with us that I can't wait to share with everyone. So please <laughs> go ahead and post your your whatever it is that you love to make. I, I know we've got so many, 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 many talented people in our community and y'all are getting your rocks from folks that we know uh, also from the live streams. And I would love for you guys to, to share the doings that you guys like to do. So definitely check that out. We've got on Wednesday, drum roll please, World of Rock Hounds, Kyle. And that's going to be super exciting to see because he's been done for like months and rubbing it in. I should add, <laughs> where's Kyle? Kyle is not in the house right now, uh, <laughs> but I have mad jealousy for, for his uh, completedness. And then, oh, Ozone Fine Art Ventures. Hmm. Should be interesting to see what she uh, uh, coughs up for, for her uh, challenge. <laughs> And let me let me just put an emphasis on challenge. We shall. <laughs> um, let's see. We've got something about a cheese head and a pound of mahogany obsidian. And wow, I'm just I'm missing all kinds of stuff. Ma'am Lambo isn't from Wisconsin. <laughs> no, no, Ma'am Lambo is not from Wisconsin. <laughs> Like half a world away. And thank you, Allison, again. Uh, she's using that wrench like crazy today. You're like flipping that wrench around like some kind of samurai. Uh, she shared the link for the Discord. So if you didn't see that go by, go ahead and scrub up just a touch. And you can use that link to go ahead and join the Discord. All the fun that we have all week long. And then also so that you can join in our unofficial viewer makers challenge. So <laughs> that had to be said. And, uh, oh, Theo says, dude, Travis made his first lures in honor of the first makers that spawned an entire idea or an entire field of expertise from that is so true. And thank you for reminding that it's, it would be incredible for, you know, all of the inspiration is like a particle generator. You guys, like everybody gets working into this, you know, seething mosh pit of ideas. So join us and throw a few elbows and, and some kicks. Uh, we've got this comment from Tomcat. Thanks. I forgot to say backlit backsplash. Backlit backsplash. Oh man, that's a little bit hard to say. And so I, I endorse that idea. Wouldn't that look cool for like a, a you know, like a, a mini bar? A little corner mini, mini bar needs the backlit back black backsplash. Oof. <laughs> she she needs more she needs more moose. 
<laughs> talk amongst yourselves. So after we're done with that Ozone Fine Arts Ventures chick on Thursday, we move on to Thursday. Wait, on Friday, Wednesday. I'm on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we have Rock Hounding Life. And it is so special, Rock Hounding Life, Jason is, that he gets a whole day all unto himself because you know it's got to be big. So that's going to be amazing, I'm sure. And then we have, let's see, we've got Friday, and that is Michigan Rocks, which you know that's going to be engineered to the nth decimal point in degree. And then we have Marlena, who, man, I can't get over her kaleidoscope still. So if you if you think back to some of the incredible things that you've seen on the Makers Challenges before, it's so cool because, again, I think a lot of folks feel like they kind of need to one-up themselves. <laughs> so everybody's always trying to hatch like this killer, killer plan. Um, and Cody's in the house and Cody's saying, I plan on posting a couple of, in the discord eventually, but if you've got something, go ahead and post it now so that we can share it with the, our, uh, unofficial viewer show and tell of the makingnesses of you guys. And let's see rednecks in Michigan hunt and eat squirrels. Oh my gosh, Mr. Turtle Montana. Thank you for that bit of, uh, information. And Jackie right now is making banana blueberry muffins with oatmeal and Greek yogurt. Oh my goodness. Can you share that? You actually did make me salivate just now. <laughs> Bring the bucket. My goodness, that sounds so good. And we have another one. Uh, make a gingerbread house out of rocks. <laughs> My teeth hurt. Different color jaspers for the gumdrops. Basalt for the house or obsidian. I don't know. How about mica? You could make a like a glass house in which to not throw stones. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a great idea, Jeff. I love it. Uh, fan, fantastic. You know, Cody, uh, this is this is a wonderful, wonderful point right here. I love this. I'm nowhere near as good as some of the people here. You know what? That to totally doesn't matter. What I was saying before about one-upping yourself, that's the only competition. In fact, Theo did not set it. It's a challenge, not a competition. Uh, for the first few years, people were always asking like, who won? Who won? Who was it? And there isn't a winner. It's, um, it's all about, it's all about the doing. So I think that the first year Montana rock mom, I think she made like a doorstop. Uh, she had some really big rocks and I mean, and then uh, she, she made these incredible resin pours. Uh, I think that might've been last year. And so, you know, your own breadth of creativity, it, it's, it's beautiful wherever we catch you now. And then it's really cool if perhaps that starts you on an upward journey. And that's kind of, I think the idea. And so it, wh wherever you're coming in at Cody, it's, it's, it's all you. And if you're inspired to, to make something, then mission accomplished on the, the maker's challenge. It's just, I think it's just a, uh, there's, there's a thing with artists that it really helps. I think this works with athletes too. It, it works to have a goal in mind. And so if you've got a deadline, like, oh, there's an art show coming, there's this maker's challenge, or I have to go run a marathon, it, it gets you into it. And it can be both a positive motivator, but sometimes a little bit of a kick in the tuchus if you need a little bit of help to mosey you along. And so hopefully th this is just something that, that helps you be inspired. And I think that the fallout from several years past is that a lot of people, like especially right around the Makers Challenge or right after, they're just like, oh man, I totally, you know, I did this thing kind of like uh, Travis, where I, I did this thing because I was just so excited about you guys, you know, the the infectious nature of of just being so wound on on making a thing. And so that's really the 
that's the that's the bottom line for for this whole thing is is um we're we're hoping that there's some some infectious motivation for for ourselves and everyone <laughs> um and so let's see <laughs> more more conversation scott's in the house uh people talking you know throwing back and forth about some of their their favorites and where where we've been where we're going needing better tools boy we all feel that way somebody left a comment on one of my videos recently that they uh they were recommending i get a saw <laughs> And there were, I think, two videos uh, that I can think of where I posted sawing rock with a handsaw. And there's piano wires that you can get for a jewelry saw uh, frame, like a, a German jeweler's saw. And I, I bought several and I started to cut rock that way because I no longer felt like I, I achieved what I needed to by just breaking them. And I wanted to make uh, knife handles. And the other one was, I believe, uh, a piece of obsidian that I wanted to cut on the correct angle so that the Aurora Borealis would look right. As you guys have been watching Kyle and, and you know his great explanations on how to zhuzh the, the color out of the stone, it's important, it's so directional. And so at any rate, I didn't have a saw. And my mama taught me that it doesn't matter <laughs> that you, you pop up your studio, wherever that might be, and you make do with the tools that you have and you just forge forward and do the thing. And so I did the thing with what I had and they were like, you need a saw. And yeah, I did. But I wanted to do the projects and I did the projects anyway. And yes, they were more time consuming. But what did I learn? I learned so much. So I think that the, the bottom line, again, is do with what you have. And sometimes if your ideas expand beyond the tools that you have, see what kinds of things that you can hack so that you can get the job done until perhaps you can achieve the, the tool, tools that you would love to have. I mean, I never dreamt when I was using my handsaw, uh, doing uh, knife handles <laughs> like from from slabs from a handsaw that at this point I'd have a 20 inch saw and a 10 inch saw, you know. And so I had to, to type in a comment to the person that, that commented recently on an older video like, oh, I got saws now. But it was so important for me to do that that project for for my own growth and so grow <laughs> go forth and grow <laughs> um let's see uh and, and again i've lost track a bit of the the chat and so i'm gonna catch up a little bit but uh that say being said we've got uh Friday, Michigan rocks and Marlena. And then Saturdays, this, this like little channel sticks and stones. And so it's going to be very interesting to see what they come up with. And let's see, we have a question here from Jackie. Karen, what was the first thing you created with a rock? Um, a projectile. <laughs> I think, I think like quickly thinking back in my memory banks, the first thing that I think of is picking one up and putting it in, you know, a slingshot and, and doing that. But, um, my mom has, and my grandfather have been working with the materials my whole life. And so I, I was quite young when I was allowed to, to play with things that might eventually become something. And so I can't, I can't remember, um, except for that, uh, when I was really young, my, my grandfather did allow me to make a turquoise ring in his machine shop, uh, with the soldering and the whole nine yards. <laughs> and so that's the first thing that I can remember making, um, that I think was next level. And I think I was seven or something like that. Um, and before that, my mom would let me uh, make the kind of bracelets and chains and things like that, where you just, uh, you take 
beads. And so she'd have all these cool beads and she'd give me the wire and she taught me how to make the, the loops that would connect the, the wire together. And I, I believe that was before I, my grandfather allowed me to make the ring. And so, um, you know, I was, I was putting together those kinds of, of, uh, jewelry pieces, like at a super young age. And it was just so much fun to just run your fingers through all the different colors of the, the beads and, and, you know, beautiful, beautiful stones and things. Um, let's see, we've got, uh, Allison still wielding her wrench. Like it's, it's like nunchucks and she's got, uh, Mam Lambo's link up there who is, is definitely not from Wisconsin and possibly New Zealand. And <laughs> Jackie wants to know how the heck this new sticks and stones guy got on the makers challenge. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. He just went to the head of the class, didn't he? Who's, who's he buttering up around here? That's great. Currently rock hounding. Thank you, Allison. And uh, oh, is is Sandmaker in the house? I see Sean just said hello to, to Sand. And so Randy Steinkern and, and happy trails wherever it is that uh, the trails find you this fine evening. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Turtle Montana, I almost read that for the class. Uh, so at any rate, um, you can come back here for this uh, lineup, or if you use hashtag Makers Challenge, uh, what is it, Theo? Hashtag Makers Challenge uh, twenty four. Uh, what, what's our our handle? It'll take you to the playlist of of everyone. But what's really cool is knowing that it's coming ahead of time and making sure that you're hanging out for the the uh, premiere is is a really cool thing. If they do a, a premiere, I'm not sure that every single channel will. I do remember at some points uh, in time, people's uh, videos did go up like really late at night or really early in the morning, just dependent. And so uh, keep your eyes open though. Uh, and maybe, okay, so Theo says that it is, oh, that makes so much sense. Makers Challenge 5. Is it really 5 already? Crazy. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, and so that's, that's the, the, uh, the exciting excitement coming up for us for, uh, the, the week to come. And some people that are part of the makers challenge, they work on this stuff all year long. And it's kind of, to me, it's like the, uh, the Halloween outfit that like, at Halloween after you're already something else, you're like, oh, I should totally be this next year. And you think about it then, you might remember it once or twice throughout the year. And then like when Halloween comes up again, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to be? And I like, I had so many good ideas and I don't know what to do. Um, so yeah, some of us play one way and some of us play the other. Um, I'm, I'm more of a uh, wait, wait for it to get closer kind of person. And then, uh, Theo says that he's also making a playlist on his channel as well. Awesome. Thank you, Theo, so much for, for doing that. And Jay Hick is looking forward to seeing what we do. Uh, so excited too. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite things that happens all year long in this community, like watching, these these super interesting directions and like surprising things that that people come up with i love it um and you're welcome to in the the chat if you remember one that uh, jackie owns all the rocks brian that's hilarious um i think she might <laughs> all the ones that we have like we're just borrowing from jackie um if you if you can think of one that that you thought was just particularly incredible, uh, you can stick it in the chat because some of the folks that maybe weren't in the community at the time or don't know that particular channel would probably value uh, having having that tip 
because it's also very fun around Makers Challenge time. If you, uh, Theo, if you hit the the hashtag Makers Challenge, like say four, Makers Challenge three, etc., and so forth, is can they see binge watch the ones that came before? Is that a thing? Uh, because I love watching the the challenges. Uh, it, like currently, rock houndings is something that I totally, totally want to do. Uh, not the pizza. No, the pizza was cool, but like uh, the the last one that he did was was super awesome. And Kyle's in the house. Your ears were perhaps burning. I was saying that I was super extra double jelly that you've been done already for like a month or two or three. So, uh, oh, and Rocky is here as well. So uh, <laughs> we were just talking about the Makers Challenge and how excited we all are with that coming up. And uh, Kyle saying, my Makers Challenge video is uploaded and waiting now. <laughs> well, cheers to you, Kyle. Your, your Wednesday um, <laughs> co-pilot is still working. In fact, I, I actually had to put stuff away in the background so that you y'all didn't get any any tips on what might be coming. <laughs> I was like, okay, what are there any parts of my project that are are out in the the studio? Like I said, I've been staying up really really late working on things. And oh yeah, says Theo. Let's pop that bad boy up here. The hashtags are retroactive, but. I also have a playlist on my channel with every Maker's Challenge video. So you can indeed start and go down and watch them all in that playlist, which uh, good on you for, for putting that together, Theo. Thank you so much for that. And, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So you know what it was funny? And this is from a few weeks ago, I think I do this almost every time though, is that I'll, I'll be reviewing the, the live stream because I always miss people's chat comments. And I feel so bad about that, you guys, but <laughs> I noticed that I'll try to click on one or I'll be unclicking one and it'll click another one and put it up. And I, I know that people have been like, why is, why is my comment up there? <laughs> Why doesn't she take down my comment? And I didn't even realize that I put it up there in the first place. And so, yeah. Oh, oh, you're just, you're just bragging now, Kyle. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been done since the beginning of December. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and uh, uh, it looks like we're sending uh, positive vibes to to Curdle, to Curdle, to Turtle. That was like an amalgam of Kyle and Turtle, I think. Um, curdle, <laughs> curdle the turtle, and <laughs> um, let's see. Theo says that sticks and stones guy is really just voluntary labor that I keep in the cellar. I mean, he lives there of his own will. Yeah, <laughs> I love your uh, his who's the the announcement video where uh, we meet said uh guy that that lives in the cellar <laughs> and boot would love to to remind everyone that tick season will be in bloom so be mindful absolutely the kaleidoscope was so cool right scott ah i can't get over that and then um actually uh from those plans that uh marlena made um, Ken, who I think he's not here. Ken, where's Ken? Like there's, <laughs> there's a, 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 an absence in the force. Um, red leader, <laughs> uh, the Ken, Ken actually made me one of those, uh, flashlight Marlena kaleidoscopes. And I, I'm so deeply touched. It's, it's got a place of honor in my studio. Um, Wait, <laughs> John says, Karen, they're not positive vibes for Turtle. They're handcuffs, but Turtle keeps escaping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys rock on in the chat. <laughs> um, 
All right. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to shift over really quick, uh, to, uh, what I had said I would, would bring up for, for Jackie without the exact thing that I wanted to show Jackie. But since I was, I was in the archives anyway, I thought I would do a thing and let's see, there we go. Um, so some of, some of the past, uh, pieces that, I've done, and actually, some other people have asked about this too. So I thought I'd just like kill some some birds with a stone. Um, these are both opals and other stones. Like a, we've got a pearl and a piece of rhyolite uh, on, on the right hand side. And I know that somebody in the past, like say week or two, was uh, wondering how much work could be done on one of the high tech diamond flat laps. And I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stones that I've cabbed on that. And so all the cabs that you're about to see were all done on that lap, unless I didn't on the flat lap. The, and it's only a six inch also. Uh, the ones like I didn't make that pearl and I didn't make that um, the opal that's above the uh, the piece on the right hand side, and then I also want to share with you guys that don't have studios. Um, a lot of these pieces were just done in my gallery, where I just did a pop up studio, which is not anything more than you could just get accomplished in your kitchen. And I was using propane uh, and butane for the torches, and so there wasn't anything um, that my insurance wouldn't cover in there. And so I just want to let you guys know once again, like you can get a lot done with with uh, not that much as far as tools go. You can use a Dremel as your flex shaft, or you can do, I used to do all of my uh, polishing and my sanding by hand. So, you know, just files and sandpaper and just biceps. And so at any rate, uh, that that can be done. And we'll go on. So these are these are like years and years and years old. Um, we have a thank you uh, journeys. And so we've got a thunder egg to the left hand side and moss agate uh, and that's opal agate on top. No, no, no. That's actually a piece of petrified wood. Um, so once again, uh, I love freeform cabs, but you can do both calibrated cabs and you can do freeform cabs on a, on the flat lap. It just takes longer. And, uh, in order for you to get something that's like, you know, perfectly around, you can either use the padded, uh, laps that they have, or you can just keep her moving, which is what I do. I don't have any padded laps. Um, let's see. So, uh, Chris is, is saying, I'm going to put that up here. Everything I do uh, is on the same lap, but he's got an eight inch. <laughs> Woo, he's got so much room for activities. I love it. Such a great machine. Exactly. But my work isn't as pretty as, oh, come on now. I think it is. Um, and so, uh, at any rate, the, the, the cabs, if you're interested in producing cabs, like, I was commercially like, you know, this was, this was what I was doing. I, I had an art gallery and I'd make jewelry, uh, in the gallery and that was my bread and butter. And so believe me, you can, you can do it. You can do it. Thank you, Melissa. Did I say hi to you? I don't know if I did. <laughs> so, um, uh, if I didn't, hi. And, Moving on. So I love working with our, our local stones. And that was my concentration when I first uh, was was doing my gallery work. Uh, the 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 jewelry in the gallery was was uh, mostly Oregon. And so uh, getting different stuff like our moss agate, our thunder eggs. This is a botryoidal moss agate. And I loved doing like the, the unique stuff. And that's one of the coolest things about, I think, lapping stuff yourself is that you can get a specimen and you can choose the part that you want to use and then create the, the, the cab from that. And all cabs don't have to follow any 
rules if you are going to be the the jeweler who's going to set it. And so in this case, you know, I I left it open back so that you could uh, see the bots through the back and and illuminate it. But um, obviously, that's not a a, an orthodox cab like with the the crazy bots and it's an extremely high dome you can you can kind of get an idea of that uh from the picture um and thank you randy i really appreciate it and yeah spot uh i really love brushwork uh a spot was saying i think that the the uh pieces before and you'll see more of it it looks like kanji and um I, I used to do uh, sumi brush work almost every morning, um, Enzo's and and script and all like just uh, I would roll the rice paper down and just go for it. So a lot of the stuff that I do, actually, a lot of uh, the beginning of ideas comes from like a brush stroke type of idea. So thank you so much, Spot. Like, I love that you saw that. <laughs> Lovely. And Sonia says elbow grease. Yep. It, it like really does work. And it's, again, it teaches you a lot and it, it can make you more efficient, you know, <laughs> like you figure out how to do something better so that you work smarter, not harder and that sort of thing. So, um, thank you, John. Uh, and we'll go. So uh, the I had a whole series. Thank you. Annie's in the house. Hey, Annie. <laughs> um, I had a whole series, the one on the left, uh, I, I called them embraces. And it's not a wrap, but because it's soldered in, but um, it it kind of was again, like a setting that embraced the stone because I had so many stones that were good all the way around. And so again, those of you that are out there that are, are working on ideas and there's another kind of kanji ish piece, I guess, um, you can see the ethic there, huh? Uh, spot, um, that, you know, a lot of times, if you if you just hold on to that stone and you ask it to let you know what it wants to be uh mounted like you know uh it'll it'll let you know and you can kind of make your own way uh it doesn't necessarily have to be something that somebody else thought of and so uh, yeah i had a, a whole um a whole i guess uh collection of embraces and then again brush strokes uh for that one on the the right and that's actually a uh, thunder egg there at the bottom um from uh the the southeast of the state so you can see the rhyolite's really different lots of blue in it um and that uh is actually a piece of uh, uh agate with a bunch of white pluming in the middle that of course is washed out by the background and a, a lovely boulder opal because i can't keep my fingers off of the opals as you guys know um here's another opal on the left hand side a big piece of moss agate uh more brush strokes as uh spot was able to see before and i love doing the open back pieces and so these are all clear through the back which you can kind of get an idea of um there's a very little uh silver like just enough to frame it in the back so, so it's got somewhere to sit um and this is a thunder egg uh on the right and then moss agate is like the sidecar there and uh just having having a super fun time playing with the natural shapes that the stones want to be like really imposing the least amount on the stone as possible to get it uh polished so a lot of times uh, on the piece on the right actually has a ridge line through the center, which you can kind of see. So it's almost faceted because that's the way it wanted to be instead of like me just making it into the same shape as what a slab would have been. Um, cause a lot of these are cores or, uh, knocks of things that came off of the stones that I shaped, uh, without ever seeing a saw, uh, before I had a saw. And we have um, Boots saying it reminds him of Jet Bre Brecha and the ancient oriental vibe. Exactly. Those brush strokes for sure, John. Um, 
<laughs> and a pagoda. Yep. <laughs> you guys are definitely getting the flavor. I get like some of these pieces. I, I definitely miss so much. Um, and you know, uh, they're, they're out in the world being enjoyed by, by someone or many people, hopefully, uh, by this time, <laughs> Uh, all of these are long, long, long sold, uh, from a long time ago. Um, and a glaze out of found rocks ground down. Yeah, that's definitely what they make glaze out of. I wonder what research give you what colors. Yeah, it's all out there. It's totally Jeff. It's a great idea here. Let me put this up here. Um, there. And um, yeah, uh, I was just watching a video. This is really interesting of a, a, an artist that was grinding down from scratch the dirty lapis um, rough and creating ultramarine blue out of it. It was stunning and it took lots of steps, <laughs> you know, uh, taking rough and going all the way to uh, it being uh, a cake form of like what you would again use for like Sumi brush painting. And it was uh, somebody in the Asian region was was the one that they had uh, created the video with. And I, it was it looked very traditional in the way that they were creating the pigment and then creating the paint out of it. Oh, I like it would be really, really cool to to make glazes and or I, I have made pigments before, but not anything as as uh, sophisticated as I saw the video on. It was just fantastic. Um, <laughs> and yeah, get out there and get your your silversmithing skills. There's a lot of uh, both clubs and um, are in Tucson. Our community center used to have, um, like the Parks and Rec, used to have jewelry classes. And, you know, they had everything. They had the torches and you could buy silver and saw blades and everything that you needed was already there. I mean, that might just be a Tucson thing because, well, Tucson, right? But, um, I mean, it. Uh, if you want it, you can, you know, just go ahead and, and chase it. And there's so many cool videos online that you can teach yourself just darn near anything too. Like if you want to learn how to uh, solder or make a certain setting or, you know, uh, do kombu or whatever, watch a few videos. There's so many talented people that make really, really great tutorial videos. Uh, so how I learned how to Viking weave. Um, and, and actually, uh, I think it's John Mazaros. Um, I hope I said his name right. Does the most incredible old school fabrication. And I'm a fabricator, uh, which means that, you know, you're just taking a uh, sheet or wire or whatever, and you're building everything from scratch, like <laughs> Theo said before. So, um, I, I was, uh, what, Jackie and I were talking about were carvings. And so here's a couple examples of some simple carvings that I did in Sunstone. And then of course, uh, the, the one to the right is a Schiller piece and this Raven wing pearl was just dying to be its, uh, um, escort, if you will. It's got like some of the same colors of a blush. Uh, it's like an autumn colored Raven wing. Um, and then the one to the left, a uh, big pearl and an opal, because I just love pearls and opals and sunstones together. It just seems like, you know, uh, like all the, the, the bounty of the sun and the ocean, uh, and the water. So, um, I think that that, yep, yeah, that's, that's the last one. And then I ran out of time, like I started getting ready. And then of course I, I had, um, technical crashes that, that happened. And so, uh, let's see. There we go. <laughs> um, so I just said uh, that was like uh, a quick, not only just uh, walk down memory lane for for some of the jewelry pieces, but hopefully you guys feel like that stuff is uh, is accessible. Jenny, the the last two pieces that were carved are sunstones, and boy, do they love to be carved. And like I said, the uh, the one on the right had the the pink Schiller in it. 
Uh, so, so pretty. And Theo is saying that YouTube is how I learned how to silversmith originally. It's all out there. Just got to be curious enough to, to dive in. Yep. And light that torch. Yeah. And just do it. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> and spot likes basket weaving and all these things that, that you can do, you can definitely find on the interwebs. Quartz would be great to, uh, to do a piece like that with too, Jenny. Um, and a lot of, uh, quartz is really, really great to practice on. If you're interested in getting into carving, uh, it's, it's so abundantly plentiful and yet really rewarding when you're finished and it has some value. And so if you carve a piece of quartz, uh, as opposed to say a, a piece of glass, then you have something of value if you want to set it into uh, a piece and enjoy it. Or, or if you need to make up for your time being spent, uh, and make a little bit of coin from it, then there's that. Um, and Mike is in the house. I'm happy that you made it here as well. Thanks for coming. Um, I, I feel like I missed somebody. Oh, Kirk. Kirk was back there. And I think I was in mid uh, explanation. Kirk, if you're still out there, uh, thank you for coming by. Appreciate it. Um, the University of YouTube, right? Uh, it is so cool that we have this at our disposal that you could ask a question. You can literally ask a question and find the answer to it. It's incredible. Uh, we have a quick query from John. So do you draw it out first, then work and carve the stone down to fit? Or do you work the stone first and let it tell you what to create around it? And I really, really like that question very much. I think that drawing... Uh, Drawing jewelry ideas and that sort of thing is an art form in and of itself. And you see a lot of high level folks do that exact thing. Um, and I don't. <laughs> I do every now and again, like on some really important pieces, like one that I'm working for a very special person who's actually in this chat right now, I did have to draw it out. Um, and then I've scared myself and it's taking longer than I want it to. And so I like <laughs> many, many apologies. And we've had discussions about this already, um, but it's almost done. So <laughs> worry not person who, you know, who you are that is waiting and it's, it's going to be great. I'm very excited, but I had to like leap a little bit out of a comfort zone. But at any rate, so you can draw. But my personal uh, favorite way to go about it is to let the stone tell me what it wants to do. And I've always felt this way. And I usually don't work on stones unless they're talking to me. We have to be on a really good uh, informal speaking basis so that we can, you know, intimately uh discuss where we are and if something's going to work out. And if, if there's a disagreement, then usually the, the stone goes back up on the shelf and, you know, we, we choose something else. <laughs> abort, abort the mission. Theos is also faceting um, as far as learning things off of YouTube. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any guidance other than the community and YouTube and Theo. <laughs> helped me so much. And so that's got to tell you guys something like, uh, again, you just jump off the cliff because there's people here that'll help you for sure. Um, pearls, opals, and sunstones. Oh my, Mr. Turtle Montana. Yes. I, these are a few of my favorite things without getting the copyright strike. <laughs> and uh, uh, Twister is in the house and is saying Theo's channel is what inspired them to have the guts to start cutting and carving stone. That's so awesome. That is so, so, so good to hear. It's, it's a wonderful thing and engraving. Yeah. Rocky. Uh, that is, that is actually stealing my heart right now. Uh, I'm so interested in getting more into engraving and there's just so much information out there that it really does help you feel like, yeah, I, I don't have to, I don't have to have all the, the very, very highest zoot stuff to get into it. I can make my own tools. I've, I've, yeah, <laughs> had a lot of fun. Oh, and Kirk is still here. Hey. <laughs> All right. 
Um, and then, yeah, people are, are realizing that each other are still here in the chat. And oh, you were the one that said glaze. Ah, I said in the glaze kiln, there was something with the name Karen on it. Oh, that is like super, super good, exciting news. <laughs> cool. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, Kirk is the, the resident awesome ceramicist in the, the chat right now. So uh, <laughs> cheers. Hopefully it's not a moose. One of these next times that I, I do the cheers. Um, the answer for me is yes, says uh, Theo. Answer for probably all, all questions, just yes. <laughs> just like what John said before. And so um, what we'll do, and Twister is talking about drawing things out. Doesn't work for me. The design has to flow. So I'm glad that you guys are still in that conversation um, because Sometimes when I need to work out an idea, I'll, I'll put the, the stones down. You guys have seen me do it before. You know, I've got like my little color boxes, like the stones that maybe want to play together. And then I'll start like with some, some metal. I'll, I'll put them in some places and play around and do that sort of thing. And sometimes at that point, I might go ahead and do an illustration that pulls the whole thing together um, but that's usually after everybody is already having quite a party, you know, there's like, uh, it's, it's more of a portrait of those guys already like getting on and having a really good time. And I like take a little Polaroid or whatever of everybody. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't usually start with a, an, a diagram or, or a, an illustration that comes from my mind and then make the stones do it. Although I do know a very talented artist that does it that way. And that's my mom. She makes incredibly cool illustrations first. And then she, she goes ahead and works the, uh, the whole idea into reality, which is so cool to see. And, and then you have two things. You have like the cool illustration and you have the, the finished thing that is also a, a, piece of art. Um, and Cody says, yeah, the stone will tell you what it wants. It, it, that's just like the only way it works for me too. <laughs> this is the way, yeah. The Mandalorians say that. <laughs> yes, John. <laughs> um, and oh, Mike, thank you so much. <laughs> Mike says, oh, I forgot I could do this. There we go. <laughs> Should have done that for Theo's too. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you. I really, really appreciate that. That's that's going to the 1080 <laughs> uh, range for for our our platform. Yay! So so we can have like cooler cooler shots. Uh, which I'm I'm also figuring out the the extra camera thing was something that was like getting everything in a wad earlier, and so I kind of had to ditch it. Wait, what? What's that? Oh, Theo again. Okay, wait. <laughs> this is great. Oh my gosh. And this one, oh, I'm so behind in the chat, you guys. Okay, wait, wait. First of all, thank you so much, Theo. And then, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Boo. You are awesome. I really appreciate that. And then we have Josh. <laughs> yellow uh, thank you um you guys really really you know how much i appreciate that uh, why not <laughs> well <laughs> and lisa says it's all so sweet thank you mike again that's a really cool jasper you have in your your avatar too wow look at that um i like it because you guys like help that <laughs> I get to see your avatar better, but yeah, like that, that totally makes the, uh, the platform affordable for me. I I'm not kidding you. I had to wait until, uh, my AdSense, uh, landed actually. So it did. And then now I get to be like, uh, temporarily rich. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hey, did you see that? Wait there. <laughs> It's taking a little break, but <laughs> it's uh it's coming down as soon as y'all are uh we're 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 done partying and 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 I'll be hooting hooting and hollering again. Thank you, Sonia. I really, really appreciate you guys are just 
blowing me away right now. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yippee Kai, yay. This is Rocky. I know, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kyle walks away for a second and what? Like all the tips are coming in. I you you guys know that um you guys love the community. I love you. And uh, we we rock, all of us, together. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Here's another one. You guys are killing me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, thank you. Love is in the air. <laughs> right, Lisa? Oh. <laughs> well, shoes. <laughs> I guess um, we're, we're going to... We're gonna have some some wonderful things going on with the uh, the channel uh, from all of this. That you know, it goes straight back into it. And thank you so much, Chris, Lisa, all y'all, John, <laughs> Josh, Theo. You guys are the best, Mike. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Cheers. Oh, I don't know if I can smile anymore. My, you guys are gonna break my face. <laughs> yowza, yowza, yowza! Sweet love. <laughs> yeah, right, John. Uh, this is good. You guys, I I hope everybody is is I don't know feeling feeling good this Friday evening and uh, having the the cheerfulness of rocks enter your space and hopefully you're smiling too. Uh, what a, what a totally awesome community we, we have. You guys are, are all rock stars. You know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for Friday. I love it. And so with that being said, I want to show you guys something that I found down on the beach. It's for, for my next video. And so you guys are, are getting like a special preview here. Uh, <laughs> and Next time, I, I hope to have a better camera set up so that you guys can see the specimens before I put them underneath the, the microscope better. And so we're we're going to to stair step up into this thing being <laughs> like a little bit higher notch. <laughs> so this is a concretion off of the beach looks a whole lot like all of the the concretions that we come across except for like this is the thing that oftentimes will catch my eye and did and you guys probably have heard me say it in a um in a video or five i need more torito wood like a hole in my head it's it's like <laughs> we have a, a fair amount of Torito wood out here on the beaches. You guys are killing me. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Ah, look at this. Thank you so much, Angie. That's so very, very sweet of you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, and um, oh my gosh. And here's one from Melissa too. You guys are, like I said, you guys are rock stars. And Melissa says, your friendliness made me want to be part of this community. Thank you so much, Karen. Ah, thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys are the friendly ones. <laughs> and I like, it doesn't feel like we're an internet away at all. It's like, you know, you guys are all just hanging out in my living room, just hanging out, talking, talking rocks and whatnot. It's the best. <laughs> You guys are the best ever. All of you are legendary. And so I saw this and started turning it around. And I know that Kyle has found one that's kind of like this as well, where you've got the, the through and through happening. And this is so cool. It's a really different kind of wood look to it. And I was wondering if perhaps I've got some palm here and the white that you're seeing, you know, that's like, tell me in the chat, is this already like way better as far as the, the picture fidelity goes? Um, I feel like that actually looks pretty darn good. And we're, we're at um, 1080 instead of seven, whatever it is like, oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> when I see more color. <laughs> 
You guys are incredible. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's put this one up. Like, ah, I'm like tearing up out of joy. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, why stop now? Says Mike. <laughs> oh, you know, it's a good thing that that my dental my dentist is so good to me. Can you imagine? Like if I didn't have anything to smile with, like <laughs> you you'd know you'd know my gums well. Thank you, you guys, sincerely. Ah, it's 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 it helps so much. It really, really, really does. To the bottom of my heart, you you guys know that I'm pining over getting something where I can break this kind of rock with. And um, I, yeah, I, like I said, uh, went and pitched uh, for for the better platform for this and the, the Rockhound podcast. And <laughs> yeah, I'll, it looks like I'll soon be able to do more than that too. Oh, and there's a super sticker. That is so sweet. Oh my gosh, wait. See, this is one of those times. Hey, I was just talking about you, by the way. Uh, welcome in, <laughs> Al Gold Prospecting. Um, I meant to hit this one. Eee, thank you, <laughs> Angie. Rockstar. Rock on. Thank you so much. But also, I was talking about your, your live um, and how much fun we had over there with the... Um, with the... Oopsie. It did it again. I just, I was unclicking and it did that. <laughs> um, I promise I, I will come up to speed with the, the coolness of the technology that you guys have helped the channel achieve. I promise. Um, but yeah, uh, there was an incredible uh, opal going on last night and that was super fun to watch um and oh my gosh bob's rocks <laughs> you're like just just don't worry about rocks tonight karen <laughs> i'll just keep on doing this thank you so much bob thank you i really really appreciate it you know it's all going to a very very good place <laughs> and oh cheryl thank you <laughs> super sticker Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I really do. You guys are awesome. And I I will, I promise that I will not uh, uh, do anything that is um, <laughs> uh, not responsible <laughs> with your funds that, that you've pitched towards our, our community here. So um, I think I missed... Any comments that went uh, in towards your vote if the fidelity of the picture is better? Now, I know it has a lot to do with the camera that I'm using, but, um, oh, and so somebody's suggesting uh, all uh, your, the, the live messages instead of top chat. Uh, that's good because like sometimes you see like people saying hi to somebody or are uh, making a comment to what you can't see. And so that's that's good. Um, and Theo <laughs> stepped away. And yes, the wave is still going, Theo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was quite exciting um, at any rate. Uh, we've, we've got this and I'm thinking that that might be Palm. What do you guys think? And I was asking if you guys think that, uh, it looks better on screen than it did when we were at the, the lower fidelity and, um, Slim is also in the house. Good to see you. And, <laughs> uh, we're going to check this guy out under the, the microscope and see what, like I was saying, the, the white bits are uh, solicified. And you can see we've got like a definite cave in there. And so this one's gonna be fun to see. And with any luck, um, some, some, good, uh, some good wood in there. And if we, if we get a really decent look at the wood, then perhaps we can tell if it is a palm. 
because um, it's going to look different than our regular wood grains, right? And let's see. Oh, did I, <laughs> I was saying to Kyle, you know, he's got a half of a piece that is off of the beach uh, that is kind of like around. And what do we have here? Uh, Karen, that does look pretty close to the one I have. Is there a heart in the wood, <laughs> right? Well, we're going to find out. I like, it's so weird. <laughs> It's so weird, Miss Takata. I don't know. We're gonna have to take a closer look. I can't tell. I don't. I don't know if it's a heart um, or what part of the wood this is. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think this is the other half. Wouldn't that be the hilarious thing, though, if I found the other half of yours? I'm gonna have to prop this up with some some rocks to get it to stay. I've got plenty of those, though. And oh, I missed another one. Oh my gosh. Wait. <laughs> Thank you, John. Really appreciate it. May your community grow as large as your heart. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope I have a heart big enough to to contain all of the love that you guys are are all full of. You know, I'll, I'll aspire to that. You guys are awesome. Got it. Okay, so <laughs> thanks again, John. I really appreciate you. Um, so. Uh, Al says, cut it. And I got to say, when I stand on the beach, here's a question for you guys. When you stand rock hounding, what is the thing that compels you to either put it in your bag, bucket, fill in the blank, or to leave it? What makes it the lever right? And for me, like Torito wood has to be pretty special anymore because I've got like a lot of Torito wood that I, I've actually like brought some in and then, you know, they become yard rocks or I send them to somebody because they like Torito wood or however it goes. But, you know, just not in need of more Torito wood necessarily. But I saw this one and I saw how like how gemmy it was. And how different that wood grain looked or, you know, the way that it kind of like all those little polka dots were, were configured and thought, I need to slice this. <laughs> so cut it was actually the thing that like made it make the cut into the, the bag. Because, I mean, it's not a small piece. So it, like it's going to. You, you get a couple stones like that into your, your bag and you're starting to feel it on your shoulder, right? And I usually at least walk a few miles on the beach, you know, and so uh, then you have your way back. So that's another few miles and the, the, you know, it starts being a day at the gym when you've, you've got uh, however many pounds of, of rocks that you're carrying in your bag too, right? Oh my gosh, Mike, boom, or bam, sorry. <laughs> That was a bam. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> He's got the one, two, three punch on it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Here, I'll hold the pads for you. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Um, <laughs> and and so uh, let's see. Are we are we in there? I think I think that that it's sort of. So let's go have a look. <laughs> let's look into Karen's blurry, blurry world. So what we're what we're doing here is finding the the depth. Um, it's got a a working depth, obviously, and I I work on a lot of different things in this station, like uh setting stones and that sort of thing. And so it's like uh, recalibrating the the microscope each time and and it, it can take a second. So sorry, um, especially since I, I rigged how this one's put together. Let's zoom out so that we can see. And we're, we've got a fried picture. So let's go ahead and work the exposure on that and we'll bring it back into focus fuck us fuck us wow see i was in too far and that's our working distance so there we go all right 
so we're already seeing some wood grain you can see there and we're only at like i don't know maybe five one of the bummers with the way that i have it set up is that it's not easy to move but i want to move around on this specimen a little bit so we've got some like really different things going on here as far as um the color and these are those crystally pockets and then we've got this really black wood um, which could be carbonized or it could be permineralized with something very very dark like boggy and you know they keep on uh i thought at one point that i knew and then they keep on and when I say they, I mean the scientists, they keep on arguing about what it is. And so, boy, if they don't know, I don't know. And so if you feel like you've, you've got some insight in the chat, feel free to pitch what you think. Um, and so what we're looking at here is if you can imagine um, cutting a tree trunk on the diagonal, like from from uh, instead of like shearing it straight across, if you chose like maybe a 45 degree angle up to down, that's what we're looking at right now. And so you can kind of see the, the, the texture of the grains. And as we get a little bit closer, you're going to be able to see that a little bit better, but you can, you can just see like the, uh, the straws of the cells sticking up and then they go down into the, the the grain and that's what i felt like was kind of tipping it off as a palm because the conifers and that sort of thing don't don't really like have so much straw style xylem as opposed to the uh, more kind of tropical woods having that xylem that that seems to to have little straws. Um, yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty, Allison. Um, and it's groovy, says Sean. And it looks like Slim is uh, kicking it. Uh, and so have a great evening, uh, Slim. And uh, oh, I bet, yeah, people probably have to eat. And uh, Jackie sees a dog with a purple tongue. Wow. <laughs> and Mike sees Howard the duck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My friend duck. Um, great. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Wow. Definitely palm, says Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling that too. And so let's take a little tour. Um, it, yep. Uh, Angie says that she sees the duck too. Quack, says Melissa. And a lot of faces in the, the rocks lately. What are they telling us, Al? <laughs> what, are, what are we seeing? But I like that we're having a group hallucination, guys. It makes me feel better for sure. And Diane, um, yeah, she's seeing the dragon. Okay. And so we've we've definitely, definitely got some some cool things that we're we're seeing up in here. And <laughs> Theo's having trouble. <laughs> it's okay, Theo. And um, I'm going to see if I can't move this over just a bit because I want to get in there. I want I want in the cave, you guys. Who wants to go in the cave? Wow, like look at the color on this thing. I mean, I haven't done I haven't done anything to to juice this up i mean it's got like some some adjustment i guess left over from before whatever we were doing before so maybe that's a little juicy let's see sorry this is uh don't really have a, a consistent jig holding on to this rock so i'm just going to keep on moving it until we get the cave talk amongst yourselves oh there's a better way to get to the cave Usually it's take me to the bridge, but I'm trying to get to the cave this time. How about move the whole microscope? 
this thing is such a behemoth too. You don't want to do too much of that. And we'll play with the contrast again. There's our little cave right there. And I'll zoom out first, but you can see that there's like a crystal hanging on to the, the edge. Since we're getting a different look at it. There's that. I mean, gosh, man, that's, it's so gemmy. And you can see the uh, the wood grain really nicely up towards the the right hand side, um, and you can see a bunch of our sand, which we'll we'll get a close up on the sand too. Boy, the the sand from here can be so gemmy. I know that you guys are are familiar with that guy that um, does the uh, the garnets that are set on moth wings or or whatever. But I can't believe, like, we just, it's mostly quartz or silicates as opposed to there being uh, wood per mineralization structure. That is so crazy. And so I'm just loving, I'm loving, loving this little crystal that's sitting out in the middle. I left the exposure button on. Hold on. Let's do that. Although it is kind of a little bit on the light side, if you ask me. Let's get in closer. Who wants to get closer? There's that crystal. Look at that. Just imagine you. Go, anybody who's been to the Oregon coast knows how totally violent our, our beaches and our waves and that sort of thing can be. And to have that little crystal survive you saw it had been sheared off this this concretion was sheared off and this was like laying open to the elements enough to to have this little cave be filled with the sand and here's this little guy like is this a screamer and like <laughs> here's this little crystal tongue <laughs> um let's see <laughs> <laughs> Theo, apparently my Google account is like, calm down there, champ. <laughs> That's hilarious. I know Angie says it reminds her of sodalite. It's so blue. Yeah, it's 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 so pretty. So I think this is gonna make some really neat cuts. I think you guys would probably agree. Spelunking is crazy. Oh, Mike! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. Look at that. Thank you, Mike. I really, really appreciate that. And you, <laughs> Stein Kearns, cheers all the way to the bottom of that cave. <laughs> May your cave be filled with wonderful, uh, uh, beautiful drink, whatever that might want to be for you. I definitely needed to drink some of that. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Oh, my gosh. Okay, wait, wait. There's more. Oh my gosh. Tiger Eye. Thank you so much. <laughs> now I'm like having trouble swallowing. <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful. Really, really appreciate it. Um, let's see. Wrenches. Do we have somebody in here? That's Ciara, are you playing nicely? <laughs> um, I'm hoping so. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Thank you again, you guys. Uh, really, really, really appreciate the, um, the, the support. It's all going to go to, uh, making sure that we, we see more of these beach caves to spelunk. And so let's see, there we go. I'm trying to be able to see down the throat of this cave and then we'll, we'll go in because we are, I think I started to try to say what magnification, we're probably at about um, maybe 20x right now. And we, we've got further to go. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Tiger Eye, for that. Really, really appreciate you. Um, <laughs> okay, there we go. Wait, ah. <laughs> All right, let's 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 bring her down and see how close we can get to that crystal. That's why I was wiggling it around. That's so cool. Let's see what it is. Let's see. And somebody asked something about um 
<laughs> that's what I was just wondering about soul uh Cheryl I'm yeah I'm not sure uh if if we're friend or foe um if you if you uh get to name a uh a fossil I think that there was a question back there about that and so if you uh, I, I got a little distracted by a few things here and so if you want to re um repost that question I am interested in what that might have been the one who blocked several of us let's see I'm now I'm like a little distracted by the troll thing um Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I think somebody did. Okay. Thank you. However that went. Perfect. Stein Kern. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on with the, uh, the, the fun, the cave splunking. All right. But like, I will just take, take a moment to look at how agony. So we have quartz that is permineralizing or, you know, uh, taking part in making this, um, this wood so blue because I think, you know, it's, it's black for the most part. Um, and then if you move over a little bit to the right, you can see that there's a sedimentary rock that has turned to like chert and agate. I mean, what? It's, it's like super duper jummy. And we're going to get in closer. Here we go. And we're getting a look at, like, I didn't even notice that that um, there's a really nice crystal structure in the foreground over to the bottom. Can you guys see my cursor? All right, right through here. That's a great little point right there. Didn't even see that before. It was kind of blending in. And then if we change our, well, and also, like, look at that really super gemmy sand. That is so cool. And then if we change our depth, then we've got that guy there, which is like a superstar. Let's see here. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> All right, back to this. Um, so I hope everybody is here. <laughs> just got a, a a late breaking piece of news. And so I, I'm just hoping that are we are we all here? Say hi if you're here. Um okay, going in, going into the cave, and we are getting a better shot of that. And I'm gonna actually full screen this. Oh, I can't wait. I there's a way for me to do math. Well, yeah, that's a, I think that's about as full screen as we get. I was going to try to make it so that you guys could get some, some screenshots, but I think my audio, I'll figure it out. I promise I will, I will tame the technological beast, but there's, there's a way that I can make this full screen and not be muted, but I'm still figuring that one out. <clears throat> good. Hi. <laughs> oh, good. Lots and lots of highs. Good. <laughs> Twister is still here. Bob is still here. Allison is still here. Chris is still here. Jeff is still here. Tiger Eye is still here. Melissa is still here. Theo is not sure, but he thinks he's here. Uh, Lisa's here. <clears throat> Good. Jenny's here. Oh, yeah. And if you uh, went and then came back, then um, make sure to be on the, uh, the 1080 because we got it. We got it. I'm so excited about that. Um, Sean is here. Spot is here. And <laughs> Tomcat Josh is high. <laughs> I love it. Mike, good. Sean, did I say that already? Rocky, good. Scott, Diane, yay. Okay. I was, I was, uh, Randy, excellent. Cody, good. All right. <laughs> A little bird told me that some people might have, uh, unfortunately, have gotten um, left out in the cold. So we're going to go closer. And wow. I, I'm sorry. I was looking at that sand. It's it's very colorful. But let's go down into the cave now. And you can see that there's a bunch of sand there. And I'll bet you anything that we're going to see some peridot and we're probably going to see some garnet. 
Um, some of those dark ones might be garnets, but we are, we are getting down into the throat of this cave now. And you can see how like, there's just like big, um, that, that's like massive sol solicification there. <laughs> I'm like, um, chewing gum and walking at the same time right now. Sorry. I was trying to make words too. And it was just all wasn't, wasn't working out. So that's so cool. Look at that globby has like a bunch of little points to it. So I guess that's some druzy right there down in the throat of the cave. I almost don't dare. I'll move the microscope because I want to see down there further. There's also some sand that we can look at that's not in the cave. That, that is so cool. That is just like they'd be stalagmites if they're coming from the bottom, right? <laughs> I think that follows the rule. <clears throat> oh, we can even get back there further. Okay. So if you can see my cursor, there's a garnet right there. And I'm surprised that we haven't had some, some olivine, some peridot or, or what have you like jumping out at us too. Cause usually there's some super duper bright green guys, you know, and like little carnelian looking guys there too. These dark bits might be some folks, but that's spectacular. See, I wonder how much farther we can go down there. And <laughs> we do have more mag. Um, so there's a big diamondy looking thing back there a little bit further. Look there in the corner. It's probably just a, a some more druzy growing way back there. That's incredible. And that's that's not even as far down as we can go. Let's fix this. And that's as bright as we can make it though. It's getting dark in the cave, guys. <laughs> oh. There's our cave. I think what we can do is we'll take this close of a look at our wood fiber so we can move over just a little bit. And UV light delight. Ooh. Yeah, let's let's bring that out. Um <clears throat> see what happens if we kill this. Thank you for that suggestion, Allison. <laughs> You guys, you guys keep me, uh, keep me honest. Okay. And the lights go out in Georgia and then we're going to, um, maybe burn, burn your eyes. And so let's see. Oh, I need to fix our exposure as well. Wait for it. She's a glowing already. Ooh, whoa. Yeah, that's nice. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Allison, for for reminding me of what my job is. Wow. I hadn't expected there's like a serious light show going on in here. That's nice. Um I'm gonna change this around a little bit. There's there's a lot of different colors going on. Uh, there's some really bright orange and the, like you guys are seeing a, a pink magenta where it's, it's just screaming orange actually. And then we've got like a, a kind of green going on. I don't even, what would that be? Help. <laughs> um, I am going to, I, I said I was going to make a, um, a holder for my light and <laughs> Mike, this is great. And I haven't even focused yet. I need to focus this. Um, let's see. I'm just catching up. Wow. It's like a Prince concert. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ooh, see. Um, yeah, when I handhold it, remember I, I told you guys like I would work on 
I'm making a rig for, for the holding part. I mean, like the other side of this cave is really neat too. So if you guys will hold on for a second, I think I can, uh, rig. Oh, see. Yeah. Oh, I'm not even making sentences or words, but yeah, this is, this is glowing in an outrageous way. That is so cool. So we, we definitely have some different mineral things going on. So stare at a, a, a I'll turn the light back on for a second. You guys can stare at this for a second. And then, okay, everybody's eyes. Um, there we go. And then um, chat. And I'm going to get a rig going, she said. Tape, good. <laughs> okay, and uh, Rufo Chris, <laughs> I like that. Good one, Brian. Um, so yeah, I like how far over we got here because we can see those grains really nicely. I promise, 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 we'll go back in the cave and we'll check out the the UV thing. But just really quick, let's pan in and focus. And that is so wild. So what you guys are looking at right now in the center, and I'll remove the exposure thing is, um, oh, that's so cool. That's the, the cast. So where the Torito Nivalis shipworm ate through the wood, which is the black part, um, it left this hole and then it filled up with sediment and is creating this part of the fossil is just the sediment that filled the hole. Right. And you can see all sorts of little fossil bits in the sediment that has like gotten super churdy. Um, oh man, this is going to be so cool to cut you guys. I am so, so excited. Look at how much stuff is in there. Um, so yeah, foramens, you betcha, but like, wow. I mean, there might, there might be some really neat things. So that'll be something that we definitely cut and then we can, um, we can polish or, you know, at least get it, uh, flattened out enough that we can see who's in there. And I pol promise I'm, I'm working on the rig at the same time and not just playing with the, the microscope because I am supposed to have a job. I promise. <laughs> stop it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Allison, <laughs> Rocky, talk charity to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all talking charity. It's Friday night. We can do that. Totally cosmic rock. And Cynthia, I'm so excited for you um, to 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 get your your package of fossils. You're you're gonna be you're gonna be going down deep in in fossil land soon too. At what point does Theo get to see the nudibranch? <laughs> Did you see the nudibranch go by uh, at the very 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 beginning of the the live stream, Theo? <laughs> Because there was one. Maybe that's that's why you thought of it. Those churdy holes. <laughs> Jenny. Oh, my. <laughs> he saw one. Don't hold out on the nudibranch. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. That was that was in our little uh, movie. Um, I don't know if I can play the movie and beyond at the same time, like the, the little cards that I, I put up when I'm getting ready, <laughs> your little slideshow. I'll try. I'll try. When a nudibranch, when a nudibranch do what a nudibranch do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. They are so cool. Allison. We've, we've got some really neat. Oh, Brian, you used to have some. 
No way. That's so cool. Um, yeah, we've got some pretty, pretty neat uh nude ranks out out cha. Um, if you if you've got a a, a sharp eye, because they're they're pretty like they're little. We have the chitons too. Those are the bigger ones. Um, and they're all so cute. They're so cute. Just want to know what this weird this weird word is. You all keep on. And it isn't a rock. Okay. No, it's not. All right, you guys. If you keep on uh, <laughs> looking at this weird thing that I'm subjecting you guys to, I'm going to get a quick video of the nudibrank. Just because Theo and Jackie, you guys can blame them. Let me see if I can find it really quick. And talk amongst yourselves while she thinks. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Um, trying to think of the, the easiest way to do it for you guys. It's coming. My, my brain or my, uh, my computer is trying to use its brain power in a few different directions right now. And it's making the heave ho noises. <laughs> Jackie's like serious. What is it though? <laughs> Please. They're so cool. <clears throat> I just have to go find it in my uh Kreza bunch of pictures and all y'all especially if your phone has a lot of memory and you take a lot of footage <laughs> you know you have way way too much um i wonder if i should share screen or use the camera let's see 451 hmm. probably easiest to do this All right, is everybody ready for some new to Branky goodness? Okay. Me too. Okay. <laughs> we'll choose another share screen. Karen loves doing things on the fly. You know I do. <laughs> okay. There you go. There he is. <laughs> this is a very, very fancy one. And he was hanging out um, in the tide pools. I don't know about like, I think that's uh, just down from my house, really. Um, and this guy is probably like nary a centimeter long. Oh, go ahead and hit that again. He's like walking away from me at such a fast pace too, but they're pretty wild. And those, this does not do justice on the colors. Like, um, those little racing stripes that he has down his body that look kind of aqua colored. Um, they are like neon, uh, blue green and you know, his little fire tips. He looks like a Pokemon or something, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're pretty awesome. And so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> the nudibranch, <laughs> poison slug. Yeah, they're so, so, so cute. Um, and then I, I had another one I think I, I shared with you guys. Let me see if I can't find that little guy really quick too. Um, he was in the slideshow. Although I think he belongs to a, a longer clip. And so I can't see which clip it is ahead of time. Might take a little bit longer to find. I don't know. I'll 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 uh I'll cue that up for you guys another time. Uh the other one's like a lemon something, and I can't remember what that fancy one that we just looked at 
was either, but he, I want to name him Mr. Prickles. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, back to our beautiful scopiness, and we're going to pan back out. But that's so cool. I'm just, I, I want to know what those little guys uh, up to the upper left were. It's going to be really, really fun to find out what that was up to. Okay, so we're on this view again. And we are going to bring the light in in theory, which is now going to stay stabilized all by itself. And that is pretty cool. So I can still move it around. And so you can see that the, the, that like the, you know, the churdiness is definitely different flavors of something too. So we just zoomed out from there. Let's go ahead and get rid of our exposure bar and get a little fuckus. I love that also you can see the way that it's permineralizing, you know, the like all those pinpoint little stars are the centers of the um the cells. Let's get right up in there. So I was so enamored with the Let's see. That's weird. Here we go. Look at, so we're seeing much better now the makeup. I was excited about like, oh, there, there's got to be so many different things in that casting. Look at how many things are in that casting that are casting different colors. And we get a, a better look at all the cellular structure that has different colors of things that got up in them too. That's insane. That is so cool. Um, unevolved Charizard <laughs> says Bob. Nice. <laughs> um, zoology is a passion of Theo's. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, Theo. It's it's hard. I was supposed to be on a rock hunting mission and I ended up in the tide pools and it was over. I'm sorry, you guys. I like yeah, I had a hard time seeing any rocks because there was just so much uh, life in the reef. It was so good. Um, let's see. We've got uh, uh, Josh is making a video. Sounds good. Sounds awesome. Um, weird moving rock. And Jackie, uh, she says that she always wants to touch her friend's corals. <laughs> that sounds, sounds like private stuff there. Uh, they always tell me I can't because they didn't like it. And I would imagine you're just saying the, the corals don't like it as opposed to uh, your friends. Well, maybe they just don't like you touching them. <laughs> I never think of that. <laughs> um, indeed. Indeed. So. We got a thousand points of light. A thousand points of light, people. Let's get closer. I'm fixated on on this casting, and I I just love how actually the the uh, UV brought out all of those cells in the the wood too. They be glowing and stuff. I like that we're we're even seeing halos in the foreground around those. So cool. <laughs> Theo, <laughs> if we had tide pools in Montana, I would never get any rock hunting done, right? It's so hard. It's so amazing. There's such cool little worlds going on. You got to go talk to the, the, um, what are those like little dudes? Their name just, is it scuppers or? know that those are also drains for for um roofs but yeah there's always there's always like 
you know, see anemones to to touch like Jackie. You probably saw that in my slideshow too. Like I always have to like feel the feel the anemones. Um, how cool would a cuttlefish tank be? I follow a cuttlefish dude on Instagram that takes uh, footage of the giant cuttlefish in Australia. And it is so cool. Love cuttlefish. My favorite moment ever uh, snorkeling was a cuttlefish hung out with me like it was my my new Jack Russell Terrier. Like it just, and it was about that size. It was just this big cuttlefish and it just like swam along with me. Like, Hey, we're going to hang out. It was so cool. They are so freaking awesome. That is so true. They really, really are Jeff. <laughs> so cool. Um, yeah. Power out outages and, and tanks are, are no joke. You don't, you don't want that. Um, let's see what else is going on here. <clears throat> Aggressive tanks stress me out a little. <laughs> I mean, there's a, this, there's some of the prettiest, uh, uh, Brian, I'm sorry. I'm like totally on, uh, a broken, broken conversation tangent here, but like, uh, I, I love the way that all of those guys look the pretty, like the lionfish you said, puffers, groupers. Um, but uh, like it, it's, it can be stressful to have an aggressive tank for sure. Like, um, oh, what are those, uh, chicklids? <laughs> like, I had a tank with those guys and it just stressed me out. And so I went back to grommies and things that were like sort of, but not quite. <laughs> so pretty and have a good night boot. Uh, thank you. See hairs. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Uh, expiring things in your tank and new to brinks are Mike's favorite. Yay. Um, mantis shrimp are the best. Yes. I'd love to have some mantis shrimp. Uh, shrimp at all are super fun. I, I love those guys. I had shrimp at one point just for a little while. Um, and, uh, Kyle's world is good because his bins are finally alphabetized. <laughs> I'm going to move this around a little bit. We've, we've been looking at some really nice, um, I, I'm feeling palm. I think at least Lisa's right. Um, because, uh, uh, we've got some really interesting xylem and it looks even more interesting under the UV. And so I think we've kind of there's an even better look and the attempt to move this over. So, oh my gosh. Did you see how fancy that was before I ruined it? Look at how fancy those are. Oh my gosh. I, I'm going to need to take a picture of that. Um, I, I'm sorry that yet. Uh, like there, there's almost like a halo or bullseyes going on around the xylem cells. That is so cool. That is so cool. I'm going to say it again. That is so cool. All right. Snap a picture. There we go. Maybe I can even improve on that. We'll see. Instead of I'm like distracted by the chat when I should be working, huh? You see that leopard kind of pattern going on in the cells? Whoa, I knocked it over, guys. Party foul. Glow party foul. Can she save it? That's what happens when you stack rocks for your experiment. Let's see what we have now. Oh, we just changed our uh, perspective. Well, look at this. Allison's idea of uh, turning this into a black light party was a good idea. Bring that into focus, see what we're looking at. Oh, that's the crystals. Yeah. I love that one to the left. Let's see if we can't move this over. See that crystal a little better. Hmm. Moving the, the whole microscope <laughs> instead. 
This is not good scientific practice, you guys. Oh, look at that glower. Wow. That's lovely. Just like poking us in the eye. And then these guys are a little closer. That's like a, that's the cave. And so we've got this enormous depth of field to, to wrangle. And that's our crystal there to the left. Let's see if I can get that guy in view. Is that part of the cave wall? That's wild. That's wild, you guys. And then there's like little just extra glowy things that are doing things that are different from everybody else. Let's see about getting this over here. What's going on in the foreground? Boy, if you didn't know what you were looking at, you would not know what you were looking at. There's there's some of the wood right there. You can see the pattern of, of the wood. I'm going to catch up on the chat really quick. It looks like we're looking into an opal or something. And <laughs> Cheers, Bob. Definitely see you around tomorrow. Uh, Hubble telescope pick of Space Nebula. Yeah, microcosm to the macrocosm, right? I love that. I love that so much. And catching up some more. <laughs> Cheers, Cheryl. A snail tank. Yeah. <laughs> I knew somebody with a snail tank recently, and then they had to move, and it was just like a nightmare to adopt out all the snails and everything. <laughs> like they, they couldn't keep it. And so I I almost would have popped on that, but I, my, my life is complex right now. <laughs> and so I couldn't do it. Uh, but that would be cool, Theo. Oh man, an octopus would be like top shelf. I love going to our local, uh, the science center, the Hatfield, where you can go and, and hang out with the, the octopus, watch it get fed and whatnot. And what they do at the, the Hatfield actually um, is they, uh, let's see, let's do this. <laughs> they, um, they adopt a, an octopus that has been accidentally uh, pulled up by a fishing boat for one reason or another, you know, if it's a trawler or whatever, it's hanging out in a crab trap, however it works. And um, they'll adopt the octopus and they do their their science on it for a, a period of time. And then they always re-release the, the octopus unless it's sick. Um, and so it's cool. The octopus, they always have an octopus in the tank, but it's a really cool way of making a solution for a fishing boat happen that accidentally caught an octo uh, octopus and then um, being able to do science and then they always get re-released. And so, uh, oh man, I would, I would be worse than having tide pools as Thea was saying, like, that's such an incredible uh, <clears throat> uh, distraction it like having an octopus, I'd probably be like playing with it all day. I mean, you know, through the glass, like, Hey, what's up? You know, here's another puzzle for you to solve or whatever. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, I, I follow another person, not on YouTube, but over, uh, on Instagram that has an octopus that they play with. And I wonder if it's the same person. They're so intelligent. And so, yeah, oh man, what a cool thing. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Uh, yeah. And Rocky watches that person too. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's the same person and Jeff is uh, going, uh, cheers. Good night. 
And, you know, actually, uh, I probably should, should do the same. And it feels like we, we hardly got to anything again. Like it's always, I want to play with way, way more stuff. And then everybody, we, we start chatting and tangenting. And I think that that's the, the point, right? <laughs> um, and so let's do this. One of the things that I really, really wanted to, to get to tonight that we didn't, that, um, we shall, uh, at, at some point. And I keep on saying, well, maybe I'll just do like a, a midweek live just to, to indulge us, like kind of like what, what Kyle started doing. And yet like, there's so many people like Josh had a super fun live that, that we all attended. And I know that you even had a few other ones that I didn't get to. Um, I know of at least one, cause I, I like, I saw it and I, I checked out some of it historically, but I don't want to like all these new channels that are popping up and, and starting to do lives and stuff like that. I would like, let's all go and hang out there. <laughs> so I'm trying to be careful so that like, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to open up a live when, when somebody else is, is going and, and doing their thing. Allison's uh, live was super fun to hang out at too. Um, but I got to prep some fossils. The, the way that this goes I'm going to cover this really quick and then and then we can all uh, go go have the rest of our Friday evening and and meet again at uh, like the Kyle lives and then the Josh lives and the hallelujah lives and all the good stuff. Um, we've got the Paraloid V72 and you want a, a paintbrush and what we'll do on th probably the, the next live. And one of the reasons why I wanted to get the extra camera going tonight, which didn't happen. That was like part of the uh, uh, technical difficulties is um, I can show you like this, but to actually do it, it wants to be down here. And so I was going to hook up the the other camera. Boy, am I getting burned out by my my light. Let's turn the lights down low. It's better. Um, now, now I'm like in the red room. Uh, here's a fossil that needs the, the paraloid goes on the bone. You guys saw, if you saw my fossil fest video, um, the the prep can uncover all of this bone. You leave some of like, this is a perfect one. Cause like there's all this wonderful matrix on the back that will go ahead and hold the subject together. And, um, we will be taking all this material away, but we have to protect the bones while we're doing that. Well, we paint the B 72 on it and it will protect it while we get this guy into an acid bath. And you guys have probably seen that on Mam Lambo's channel, but um, it will it will go ahead and do some of the prep all by its onesie. Just get that acid bath going. And each time you take it out, you brush it off and get as much of the material away you cover the new bits that are exposed and then that's such a good end uh and then you um put it back in the acid bath when you get close enough then you start the uh the prep with the air scribe and so summer's coming that's when to do your air scribing because it's an outdoor activity unless you've got like a really good dust box, you know, like with the armholes and everything's contained inside. And so if it's time to scribe in the summer, then all the acid has to be done before that. And that takes weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, again, if you've been watching Mam Lambo, you know that. And so if I get started now with the acid prep, then we should be ready to do the air scribing uh, when the, the weather gets good enough to be able to do that outside. Anybody have a guess as to what we have here? Is that a cowfish? 
<laughs> I, that probably is is not a guess on on this particular fossil, but something that they they were talking about in the chat. Um, <laughs> but uh, yep, there <laughs> with insane shipping, and so um, we'll we'll go ahead and be prepping that guy, and we've got. This guy here that we need to uh, get prepping on. Lots of good bone in there. Lot of, it's a good collection. These are some of the smaller concretions that I have with like some, some decent bone activity going on in it. And then um, we just need to, to get, get the party started. Now, if you don't uh, protect your prep, then it'll, oops, there's some, some little bit of lint on that guy. Um, it's, this guy got shelved and now he's got lint on him because I had to get some B72 before using any more acid. All of that light, uh, let's see the ridge line on the very top that you can see there that has like light looking material, all of that was uncovered with acid. And I didn't have the protect, uh, the protection for it. And so um, it started frying the material, hard to see, but um, when, I, when I get the better camera set up next week, hopefully, or the week after that, then we'll, we'll be able to see how fried this is at any rate. Um, I'm going to give this the, the B72 and then we'll go ahead and proceed with this prep that we already know what this is. This is a scoot from an ancient huge fish. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> that's what not to do. <laughs> and so uh, th that's going to be uh, an uh, upcoming episode along with uh, doing some fish prep from Kemmerer. So it'll be very, very fossily, but uh, working on the, the maker's challenge right now. So not doing the fossils at this exact moment in time, not until after Wednesday of next week. And so definitely go and check out all of the, the maker's challenges video starting on Sunday. Makers Challenge 5 uh, hashtag is going to be uh, how to find them and or hit uh, Theo's channel, Theo Kellison, and you can find not only the playlist for this year, which is Makers Challenge 5, but a playlist that has all of the Makers Challenges on it. So you can go ahead and binge watch, which I think I might have to just do anyway, because they're all super duper fun uh, videos. And we have some superstars that uh, had had been in the the uh, Makers Challenges in, in years past. And so it's a, a super fun time to, to go check out. We'll see everybody at all of the good live streams all weekend long. I'm sure everybody's going to be doing some, some super rad stuff. Uh, definitely Kyle having his... Um, his sales. And, uh, I know, uh, Alleluia and, uh, Josh's journeys, uh, who might be the Tomcat now, I'm not entirely sure. Um, <laughs> doing some killer lives and, uh, <laughs> makers challenge five, be there or be squared. That's right. <laughs> so cheers to you, uh, Mike and Theo and Kyle and Allison and Sonia Brian, John, Lisa, Tiger Eye, <laughs> Tomcat, Josh, all y'all, mom, did I already say mom? <laughs> Everybody who came tonight, uh, those of you who, who tossed in all of the supers, I thank you from the very bottom of my heart, but I thank all of you from the very bottom of my heart for coming on and hanging out and just having a good time with the rocks. It's always uh, the best party ever. Randy, thank you so much. Melissa, thank you. Sean, thank you. Sony is still here. Thank you. Cody, thank you. Rocky, of course. Theo, I know I'm going to be seeing y'all all weekend long. I'm going to be stressing like mad trying to get my Makers Challenge done. But when I'm taking breaks, I'm going to be hanging out with you guys. And so you're, you're going to be my, um, 
mental health unit <laughs> for the weekend. Yeah, thank you so much. It's always such a fun time hanging out with you guys, Allison and, and Twister and all y'all. Uh, oh, Tiger Eye. <laughs> You're going to get me all started all over again. Thank you so much again from the bottom of my heart. You're you're the most generous and fabulous rock crowd in the whole wide world. Steinkerns to you and yours. I wish you the very, very best rock hunting and hounding, the best fossicking missions to go get rocks of any kind. Gems, may the gems be in your life as well. Uh, you guys are all rock stars. You're fabulous. Thank you, Steinkern. And I will see you rocking out somewhere out there in the world. Cheers. <laughs>